Shalom, and welcome to Light of the Hill Ministries. And in today's teaching, we will be continuing on our study of Genesis. If you want to follow along, I will be posting this in the comment box below. And now, onto the teaching. And Yahweh said to Cain, Why is he wroth towards you? And why is your face fallen? Is it not if you do good, you are to be accepted? And if you do not do good, towards you the door is a sin. He is lying, and towards you is his desire, and you must rule over him. And Cain told Havel his brother, and it came to be, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Havel his brother, and killed him. Genesis 4, verses 6 through 8. The Hebrew word for sin is chata, Strong's number H24 or 3, meaning sin, sin offering, condition of sin, guilt of sin, punishment for sin, purification from sins of ceremonial uncleanness. Here in this verse, it means sin offering, as it says in Exodus. But the flesh of the bull and its skin and its dung you shall burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Chata. Exodus 29, verse 14. Thus, Yahweh is simply pointing to Cain's sin or animal nature, or to an actual animal to be slain as a blood offering for his sin. Either way, it is clear that Yahweh is telling Cain to repent from his sin for his ways and exercise rule over that which belongs to the animal realm. The whole point of man sacrificing animals was to show that man can indeed rule over his animal nature. But here Cain refused to do that, and as a result, he allowed his animal nature to rule over him and murdered his brother Havel. This mirrors the sin of Adam and Hawa in eating the tree of knowledge of good and evil. One, they both disobeyed and it led to death. And to the man, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, saying, Do not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. It toil you are to eat of it all the days of your life. Genesis 3, verse 17. And Cain told Havel his brother, and it came to be, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Havel his brother, and killed him. Genesis 4, verse 8. Second, Yahweh comes to fellowship with them and inquires what they did. And they heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim walking about in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh Elohim among the trees of the garden. And Yahweh Elohim called unto Adam and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, Who made you know that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? Genesis 3, verses 8 through 11. And Yahweh said to Cain, Where is Havel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's guard? Genesis 4, verse 9. Third, the ground was cursed upon for bone. And the man said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, saying, Do not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. It toil, you are to eat of it all the days of your life. And the ground shall bring thorns and thistles for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you are to eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you return. Genesis 3, verses 17 through 19. If you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Genesis 4, verse 12. Fourth, 
they were both expelled from the presence of Yahweh. And he drove the man out, and he placed Kerevim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Genesis 3, verse 24. See, you have driven me from the face of the ground today, and I am hidden from your face. And I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and it shall be that anyone who finds me kills me. Genesis 4, verse 14. Oftentimes we mirror what our parents did as far as patterns of the sin is concerned. It is no different for Adam and Cain here, or Cain here. And so we need to guard, uh, we need a guard to guide us away from sin. A brother who will guard us and point the way, the right way. Cain's insolent and arrogant response to Yahweh's question is a sign of his inward acknowledged guilt. This is always the way of guilt, to disclaim responsibility. Many leaders will say themselves this very phrase, or they might word it differently like, I'm only accountable for my family. I don't need to be accountable to brethren. But yes, sad to say, I have heard from several leaders in the body of Messiah say this very thing. Well, they themselves don't understand that they need a guard, a brother, to help them to guide the way of truth. In this, may we all understand that we all need to be accountable to one another, and to guide each other toward Yahweh. Cain replies, my brother, what do I have to do with my brother? Am I my brother's guard? Is it my responsibility where my brother is? The hypocrisy of that is most evident. Though Cain could disclaim responsibility for knowing where his brother was, he did not hesitate to assume greater responsibility of taking his brother's life. How does one become one's brother's guard. First of all, we are brought we are all our brothers guard, guarding them and protecting them as we carry each other's burden. Galatians six verse two says Bear one another's burden and so complete the Torah of Messiah. If one wants to complete the Torah of Messiah, then one needs to bear one another's burden. Bearing the burden of his brother is something Yahweh wanted Cain to do with Chavel. Yahweh wanted Cain to be to be able to account for his brother. And that speaks volume to the relationship Yahweh wants us to have with our brother and sister in Messiah today. There's no question to how important brotherly love is to Yahweh. If anyone says, I love Elohim and hates his brothers, he is a liar. For the one not loving his brother whom he has seen, how is he able to love Elohim whom he has not seen? 1 John 4, verse 20. It's very easy for one to think they don't need a brother or a sister in Messiah while they have their immediate family that we don't need a brother or sister beside to show them that they are that they care or have or show affection. Usually these type of people put up an air that everything is fine when in reality it isn't. The global pandemic has left a lot of people feeling cut off and isolated. More than ever, people are in need of brotherly love. So I will ask the question again. How can we be our brother's guard? Well, there are three ways one can be a brother's guard. One is to be devoted to one another. Sometimes we think our sphere of people is limited to those of our household. And we think only they deserve our love and attention. But Yahweh wants us to branch out and look to those who can't always give back the way that our family members can. We are quick to honor those who are exclusive to only our cliques or sphere of peoples. 
Sometimes we give honor to those we worship from a distance, whether it be a popular teacher or a leader. We give them celebrity status when we shouldn't. The scripture actually says this about honoring one another in brotherly love, tenderly loving toward one another, in appreciation, giving honor to each other. Romans 12, verse 10. We can only do this by simply, or we can do this by simply talking to them, making sure that they are okay, or sharing a compliment, paying a visit. What this means is that we should be proactively seeking to honor the people within the body of Messiah, no matter the type of relationship we have with them. The word devotion also instructs an intentionality and persistence of caring, loving, and honoring one another. The sad thing is most leadership don't even do this when they should lead by example. The next thing we could do to be our brother's guard is to be genuine with our brothers and sisters in Messiah. To sum up, let all of you be like-minded, sympathetic, loving as brothers, tender-hearted, humble-minded, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this in order to inherit a blessing. 1 Peter 3, verse 8 through 9. Brotherly love is central to being our brother's guard. But if that love is not coming from the right place, it will bear no fruit. Paulus instructs us to let our love be without hypocrisy. Let love be without hypocrisy. Shrink from what is wicked. Cling to what is good. Romans 12, verse 9. This word hypocrisy in Greek is Strong's G505, and forgive me if I don't pronounce it right, a new pokritos, I'm not an expert in Greek, meaning unfeigned, undesigned, sincere. In other words, love shouldn't be with a disguise, no pretending. Brothers shouldn't have to put on a mask and fake love. Kipha or Petros describes the type of attitude brethren should have for one another and perfectly directs us in what is needed to genuinely love. A humble mind to serve, sympathy for conflict situations, unity of mind for understanding, and a tender heart and love in all seasons. And lastly, a desire to serve Yahweh and others around you. The purpose of service is so that Yahweh can reach others through our hands. Yahushua is the ultimate example as we see him lay down his whole life in service to us. Love serves. Hate expects to be served. Paulus puts it this way. For you, brothers, have been called to freedom. Only do not use freedom as an occasion for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Galatians 5, verse 13. Cain didn't look to serve in love. Rather, he looked for occasion for the flesh and served himself. How we serve one another and be of help is key. The silent cries for help must be acknowledged even when they are not directly aimed at us. In order to acknowledge this requires being less focused on self and actively focused on Yahweh and others. Yahweh is looking for those who will take up the burden of caring for others. If Cain had been looking to take up Havel's burden, the story would have been very different. But instead, we see an example through Cain as to what not to do. We must understand that people are either giving love or crying out for it. We're either in one of these categories. 
which one are you? It is therefore important that we make an effort in being our brother's guard, making ourselves available for those who cannot. May we all be the vessel that Yahweh uses to love our brothers as he loves us. Hallelujah. If you like this teaching, please comment, like, share, subscribe, and click on the notification button to be notified of the next teaching. Yahweh bless and shalom to your homes.